few hints and tips and tricks that, that just may help you get up to WrestleMania 34 tier with the rest of us just a little bit quicker. Because I know it can be frustrating sometimes when you're looking all the way up there at those tiers thinking, I'm never going to make it. People, welcome to another edition of that finger tapping frenzy that we all know and love as WWE Supercard. With me, Big Jim, here at Bad Lad Dad HQ. Now, today's video, a bit different because it's not the Jim Barner account, it's not my WrestleMania 34 account. This is by popular demand, Enkyoko, which is in beast mode. And what is Enkyoko, you say? Enkyoko is the second account that I set up in season one via Facebook when I was doing some recording via Bluestacks. Basically, I haven't really used it uh, until this season. Just been having a little tinker and a little play now and again. And I'm going to use that to show you guys who aren't in WrestleMania 34 tier a few hints and tips and tricks that, that just may help you get up to WrestleMania 34 tier with the rest of us just a little bit quicker. Because I know it can be frustrating sometimes when you're looking all the way up there at those tiers thinking, I'm never going to make it. There's some things here where you're probably doing most of them, you might not be doing any of them, you might know all of them but have thought, well, what's the point in doing them? I don't know. You might get some use out of this, I hope you do. So here goes, let's crack on. Now to start off with, I think the best thing to do is just have a look at uh, my cards because you'll notice a few things from my cards. Uh, when Ankyoko moved into season four, uh, it was in um, the old SummerSlam tier and it's now in Beast Plus. Now the Spring Fusions had a big part in this. You'll see here uh, with Eddie Guerrero, Beast card from the Fusions. Farouk is the second best card in the deck. Where did that come from? I didn't buy it. It's not from a, a pack that was bought. That's a daily login bonus. So that shows, shows the importance of those. So we'll come on to that as well. And then uh, basically most of these cards that you can see here, why is it sticking? Don't stick, thank you. Um, are the fusions, and then we get into some uh, beast cards uh, themselves. Now, what I'm going to do is just basically talk you through how this was possible. The reason why I managed to get so many spring fusions on this account, and hardly any at all on Jim Varner, was the amount of picks that I'd got stored up. Now, how was I storing up picks? How was I doing it? I was doing it through King of the Ring. I shall come on to that again as well. That's something else that's extremely important. Uh, Spring Fusions, first time round, were very productive. The second time round, not so much. Um, but again, Fusions, that's something else. It's a little little mine that you can tap into. Uh, but I think what we'll do, uh, just to start off with, let's just go through things in order, and I can go through the virtues of uh, making sure that you do these things. With the free packs, we just go in and collect um, the latest pairing. As you know, uh, you get every four hours, there's a card to pick up. And right now, there is this Fusion Fury going on, but a double F action. So you might go, well, you know, what's the point of Survivor card? What's the point in a couple of credits? Uh, what's the point? What's the point? What's the point? Well, there's a few reasons here. Firstly, those free cards, they may not be of much use to you on this tier, but... You can feed them into uh, your existing cards, so they can be used as fodder for that purpose. The credits, two credits doesn't seem like much, and if you manage to do them uh, throughout the day, so you pick up eight or ten credits uh, a day, what you have to bear in mind is Ninja Boy, through these credits and the credits you get from Login Bonus, actually used those 600 credits to get himself the last man standing, Triple Her. Um, that was the difference for him, basically, uh, between uh, not doing it and getting a decent card. So those credits, if you just save them and spend them wisely, can come in useful. There we go, it's another Survivor card. Another couple of credits. I know it's only two. I know it seems small, but as you can see there, I'm up to 369. I've, at the moment, I've got not any plan, not got any plans for that, so we'll just leave that uh, for the time being. Uh, daily login bonus, just make sure you do this. It can be a chore, and particularly if you're not playing uh, regularly, but you still want to be active in the game. I know a lot of people's frustration is they just can't play seven days a week, 
and that particularly hurts when it comes to the events because you can't do the events. But what does it take? 30 seconds to log in on a daily basis? Now, okay, I have missed a couple of days there, but I'm still going to get the uh, 28 days to log in. And as you can see, I've got all the packs up, uh, up to date. These can provide some decent cards for you, and that I will take you back to Farouk. He is my second best card, Monster Farouk, and he came from um, the pack that they gave away a couple of months back for your 20 day, day uh, login. So I wouldn't have had that otherwise. I would not have that uh, male monster card. So that's worth uh, noting. Pretty menial, pretty meaningless to be quite honest, uh, but again, these packs, I know they seem like worthless cards. You might strike lucky. You do see people uh, pulling something decent. Every now and again, our Twitter account is getting people saying, oh my goodness, just pull a WrestleMania card. But even if you've got a Titan, uh, particularly at the level that um, Enkaioko is uh, is playing at, you know, a Titan's good, a monster's good. So uh, plug away. If they're not cards that are decent enough to uh, be part of any of your decks, they can still be fodder to feed into another card. Don't underestimate the need to build up cards to feed into other cards. Now, King of the Ring. It might surprise you uh, with this strategy. King of the Ring, if we just call it up, I'm in Beast uh, Plus mode at the moment. Come on, behave yourself. Right, been eliminated. That's not a problem because I wasn't looking to win it. What I was looking for is these. 15 picks there, to add to the 5 I will have picked up uh, earlier. Now if you see um, my deck, I'm just going to manage superstars, it's only in SummerSlam mode anyway. So what you tend to use King of the Ring for in the lower tiers isn't so much trying to get yourself the best reward going, because to be quite honest, you're always going to be struggling trying to play catch up in the tiers, unless you unless you're really have got like the most high powered team for the tier that you're in, um, you're unlikely to get a win. Uh, and really, I'm not even in beast mode here. So what this is doing is powering up individual cards. I know that um, this Apollo Crews is one of the latest ones. He's nearly filled out. I mean, I only put him in a few days ago. What I'm making sure that I'm doing, though, is just chaining them. Just chain them non-stop. Don't worry about whether you get knocked out or not. Just chain them because you want those picks and you want to be levelling up your cards. So there's the two. Two strong reasons, levelling up your cards, because again, if you can't play too often, that's a way of these cards playing a game when you're not around. Uh, but two, the picks. Now, we're gonna just do a quick, um, we'll just start that, because as I've said, you've got to chain them. We're going to wild mode and just do a quick match. What happened there? I don't know what happened there. I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Anyway, look. 314 picks, 304, I can't do 314 with one hand, 314 picks to collect. Are you ready for this? Um, whether I do the whole lot on camera, I'm obviously going to have to break off, oh, I'm not going to do it if everyone's waiting on a flipping network, that's a sure thing. Come on. Waiting on a network. Oh, come on. 314 picks to go. Right, one. Um, I don't know, I might edit this. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> I might edit this down, particularly if it goes waiting on a network every single flipping card. Um, but let's just have a quick power through, see what we can get. We're obviously getting plenty of charge ups for King the Ring. Cause it doesn't hurt now and again if you are logging in and you notice that you're, say, in the second knockout round and a quick power up will carry you through, because obviously the further you get, the more rewards you will pick up. No card should be turned down. Every card is valuable. Um, so let's just power through these as quickly as we can. We obviously, there's a fuh uh, Obviously we're gonna hit the card limit at some stage, albeit nowhere near as quickly as I do on Jim Barna. Uh, but we'll battle on, look at that. It has to go all the way to the last pick, doesn't it? Right, legendary. So yeah, as you can see, 314 picks, it was something similar when they first released those uh, spring fusions. And um, 
that basically helped me when I uh, sat down to power through them because I was picking up loads of ingredients for those fusions. Um, and that pretty much carried on uh, through the course of the spring fusion event. I was just chaining the king of the ring. Admittedly, I was doing some uh, of the pay-per-view, pay-per-view, I call it that every time, the player v player modes uh, to boost picks as well because I was conscious of the fact of what a great opportunity it was to uh, improve the deck. So these, these things are there. You can improve um, through not having to play yourself non-stop. Having said that, you know, the main enjoyment is actually playing the game and the way to get a better card uh, for your deck and the way to improve your deck is to play the game. You can't escape that fact. The bottom line is playing the game is what's going to help you improve. Having said that, all these things that I've mentioned will help you, particularly if you're someone whose work takes you away for long hours or you've got family commitments or whatever your commitments are and you can't play as frequently as you want to. All these little things that um, we're talking about here will just help you. They're the things that can go on when you're not even around. The game can be playing itself on your behalf. And that's, uh, that'll help you. That'll help you just nudge yourself up a bit. Warrior! Right, still going. Shamus. We're into the 70s, getting close to the 60s. Still nothing of note. I would say we've not had anything like particularly interesting crop out. Nothing even remotely approaching beast tier. Plenty of energies. Plenty of enhancements. A few uh, Fusion Fury... Uh, tickets but from a deck point of view nothing much but again like I say and as I've kept saying this is all good fodder for your bigger cards ladder and will definitely help uh, in the long run it's a lot easier doing this than sitting down trying to chisel out um, what well, you've seen in wild mode so you you win and you get two picks so for 340 uh, picks you need to win 170 matches at two points so yes that will also help level up your cards but you've got your king of the rings doing that for you that's the king of the rings playing matches for these boys and girls right down to the last nine beast well he's a beast not the beast we wanted beast no beast no beast come on you know you want to give us a beast card just for the final pick come on you know you want to do it we go up top right it's him again Bray Wyatt again. This is just Bray Wyatt Fest. Just stop giving me Bray Wyatt. It's the last card. Beast Bray Wyatt coming up. Here we go. And it's Paul Heyman. Okay, right. Um, well, there you saw just how many cards. Um, I've probably edited out some of that. I'm pretty sure I would have edited out some of that because uh, that was quite. It took a lot longer than I thought it would do. Um, nothing uh, great in terms of improving the deck, but plenty of cards are feeding in to other cards. But just to explain briefly what you do with the green team is you're taking all of these guys out and you're putting in uh, all your uncommon cards. Whoa, clumsy fingers. Now, uh, most of these I've got uh, locked in. I'm not going to do the whole lot because you get the point. You understand what I'm saying. You fill everything out with uncommon cards. That's what you do. So you've got an entire team of green players. The important cards are down here. Now, ideally, what you would have is two support cards that would cover all four stats between them, and they'll be deck cards. So then when you go into matches, um, you straight away, you're playing your deck cards, and they will give such a high boost. I mean, look at that um, Maurice card there. Over a 1,000 uh, boost to the uh, Charisma stat. So any Charisma match you face, and if you're facing a team that's also made up of uncommon cards, but your charisma stat is over a thousand, you're obviously going to beat the opposition. Unless it is someone else playing the same game that you're just playing. Oh, I've got Ninja Boy suddenly stood up from his resting mode. I think he's got something he'd like to say. What would you like to say, buddy? If you are using the green team in Road to Glory, look, yes. uh, it only works with two pointers. And to make sure you don't play someone else doing it, make sure they've played like under 100 games and not like over 10,000. 
two very good points from Ninja Boy there. Firstly, as I've mentioned earlier, this is when you basically got down to the lowest points. Uh, you're only winning matches or occasional matches at the lowest points. And you want to actually play where you don't have to worry too much about the matches because this will, if you stick to these rules, guarantee you the win. But the second thing, as Ninja Boy points out, if you look at your opponent and it says he's played 10,000 plus matches, that is somebody doing the same thing as you. If you look at your opponent, they've only played a couple of hundreds, they're a new person, they've only got uh, a low ranking deck because they've only played a few matches. So they're the kind of person you want to play. If you follow those two rules, then it'll be just like the early rounds of Road to Glory. You can just sit and tap away and it should take care of itself, so long as you remember to play your support cards. So that's the theory behind that. It's slightly different in the PvP. If we go into the Elimination Chamber, now is this... Now there we are, thankfully I've got a deck set up there. Um, I tend to I tend to put two stars that you want to power up uh, in the deck, but it's the same kind of principle where you've got your support cards and you've got your team made up of uh, uncommons. The difference here is you're not so much looking to win every single time, you're powering up the individual card that you've got here. Now, she may be done now. She's done. Um, let's just see if we can swap her for somebody else. Not quite sure who else needs uh, needs powering up. That Becky probably needs doing. Becky, are you done? Let's have a look. Yeah, right, Becky needs to play some matches. So the theory here is, and we'll go, we'll go into it, you start your match, and very much with the Elimination Chamber, you've got to play the deck card from the outset. Uh, but the theory, again, is you will come up against people who have um, got a, a similar low-ranking deck, and you'll be able to get past them. You will encounter a lot more people who are doing something similar in this respect, but you just hope that the card that you've got in that's your biggie, one has been selected by the random picker. Uh, right, so what stat are we on? Toughness, speed and charisma. Well, let's use... Uh, Maurice is the first card. And let's just see. Okay, it's got Sasha. It's got Sasha. And there we go. We're up against um, another uncommon card. And they've not boosted. They've not got a deck card. Or at least they've not played it yet. So that we'll stroll to victory on that one. Now, the this, this same with Royal Rumble. The beauty of these is you can actually just let them play the game itself. With Royal Rumble... What you need to do is wait, uh, basically play the game, um, try and win. If you've got some decent uncommon cards in, you should be doing enough to uh, already win a few matches. But if not, you're waiting for your main card to come in. As soon as it comes in, select it, put it in place. And that hopefully should then be able to play out the rest of the matches um, and be gaining a match of experience on every single hit that it takes. Well, there you go. There's just a few ideas, a few things that perhaps you weren't aware of and a few things uh, perhaps um, that you were aware of but didn't really see the point in doing. Hopefully I've, I've helped explain why they could be useful. Uh, but if you've got anything else you want to add, any other little tips and tricks you want to pass on, then let us know in the comments down below for all you people who aren't in WrestleMania 34 tier or just trying to arch your way towards it. So there we have it. That's it for another video. Thanks ever so much for watching. You know the drill, people, if you like it. Bung us a few likes down below. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed before. Why haven't you subscribed? Come on, subscribe down below. There is Facebook. There is Instagram. There is Twitter. Until I see you next time, you stay calm.